2024 marks the 60th anniversary of Freedom Summer and the Civil Rights Act. 1964 played a pivotal role in the fight to not only register black American voters, but also the civil rights movement as a whole. The National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis is inviting the public to hear from some of the surviving activists and join the conversation that continues today. Ryan Jones is the associate curator and historian at the National Civil Rights Museum, and he is here with more on this community event. Thanks for coming. Thank you for always having us. I love your tours. Whenever he's doing the tours at the Civil Rights Museum, I'm like, what? Because it's always new things. But the symposium, um, tell me about the inspiration behind it. Sure. 1964, 60 years ago, was the year in which African Americans, specifically in the state of Mississippi, less than 3% of the population were registered to vote. And so civil rights activists decided that the best way to increase voter registration was to call for the Mississippi Freedom summer project. This initiative was to bring black and white college students from the north into the state of Mississippi to help register black voters, to teach African American history in freedom schools, and to seat delegates at the 1964 Democratic National Convention in Atlantic City. Three civil rights workers disappeared on the very first day and were later murdered and found 44 days later. And so this symposium invites those original organizers to the museum and we're going to just reflect 60 years later of the legacy of freedom summer the organizers that were behind the brainstorming in it and its legacy for today and and when you look at the impact of that moment and just kind of what's happening today it just seems kind of close like not too much time is best. Yeah, I mean, we've taken many steps forward because of the Civil Rights 64 symposium that, that we're honoring this weekend and the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act and later the Voting Rights Act of 1965. There have been many steps forward, but there are attempts now on this story alone uh, for hit history that is forgotten and not well interpreted in an accurate way, which is what we're really trying to do to keep that legacy of those activists who fought for freedom, justice, and equality. Talk to us about uh, the panels that we're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see some original organizers from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, legendary living legends, Cortland Cox, Charlie Cobb, Dorothy Zellner, Judy Richardson, they're all going to talk about their experiences in the state of Mississippi during this pivotal period, as well as historians and scholars who will be uh, talking about their books, their authors of this particular era, and more importantly, the reopening of these civil rights cold cases. There were seven individuals who were killed as a result of a hate crime 60 years ago this summer, and we'll speak with one of the many investigative journalists that played a role in reopening these cases to seek justice in those convictions. Um, and when you look at uh, what's happening right now, and uh, you know, uh, Kamala Harris potentially becoming uh, the nominee for president and voting and how it's becoming uh, such a big thing among the African-American community. How does it feel to just kind of compare the past with the current? Oh, history always repeats itself if you don't know your history. Uh, and with that, if your vote didn't count, they wouldn't be trying so hard to take it away. This is an uh, American internal demand sent by the 15th and 19th Amendments. The greatest thing that we as a society can do, regardless of race, ethnicity, and gender, is to exercise your civic duty to register to vote, to vote for who provides the best uh, possible scenario in the state of our country. And when you're looking at not just the symposiums, but um, you, you have all kinds of events, why is it important for people to visit the museum? Yes, the National Civil Rights Museum is truly a staple in the community of Memphis and as well as abroad and internationally. This is a history that did not happen that long ago, and it's a history, unfortunately, somewhat is under attack. And so in order to us to prevent some of these obstacles to overcome in our society's history and to deal with that difficult history, the National Civil Rights Museum is at the very front in remembering those sacrifices and that courage so that we as society can live in a more perfect union. Okay, well, you sound like, um, are you running for office? <laughs> no, but you just sounded like very presidential. Okay, so is there anything people need to know before they go? I know that, you know, parking and, and all that kind of stuff, the costs and that kind of thing. Sure, the, the symposium all day is $15. It will be a plate at lunch as well. You'll get an opportunity to meet with these iconic activists. Uh, you'll have 
books that can be purchased and it's just a great day to come out and listen to incredible history from historical figures and to learn that legacy going into a, a pivotal election this November. Yeah, I definitely think you need a whole day to visit, you know, both sides of the museum. Absolutely. So, yeah, thank you so much, Ryan, thank for coming you. in and giving us context to this event.